I'm Brian Goldfinger from Goldfinger Injury Lawyers. We'd like to wish you and your family a happy holiday season. Remember, if you're drinking, texting, smoking cannabis, you shouldn't drive, or somebody's going to have to hire my law firm to set things straight. Visit goldfingerlaw.com. Hello and welcome to the Raptors Reaction Podcast. I'm your host, William Loom, speaking to you after the Toronto Raptors lost by a score of 126 to 101 to the Philadelphia 76ers on the road. Um, there was This was not a very competitive game in terms of just how hard both teams were playing. Um, you know, the Raptors didn't look that uh, invested, which I guess makes sense because second half of back-to-back, um, they apparently got into their hotel at 2.30 a.m. Had some trouble getting off the plane, apparently. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, they just kind of played... Uh, I, I don't know, man. There's a couple. I mean, it's like you could give excuses, um, but I just don't think they treated this game too seriously. I don't think the Sixers, by the way, treated this game that seriously either. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, no Kawhi Leonard, obviously resting on the second half of a back to back, didn't fly with the team. Serge Ibaka was still out. JV, obviously, still out. And so, you know, those three were very important pieces uh, in, you know, their games against the Sixers so far this year. They didn't play. And so the Raptors couldn't get a handle on. Um, ben Simmons, who was dominant, I mean, 26 points, 12 rebounds, 8 assists, 11 of 13 shooting. Man, only one turnover. That's a key stat, too, because, uh, you know, Ben Simmons wasn't acting like this when Kawhi Leonard was in the game. Um, you know, Simmons has had 18 turnovers in the two games against Kawhi, but uh, no Kawhi today. The Raptors just couldn't contain him. OG really struggled defensively against him. Uh, obviously, OG had that really positive game against the Cavaliers, but... Not very good today on either end. Just a non-factor offensively and defensively. Really disappointing. I mean, 24 minutes, five ter- uh, five personal fouls for OG. I didn't think he did really well defensively on, on Simmons. And I thought he should be able to handle Simmons. Uh, but it's the same goes for Danny Green, who, you know, came back from his injury. Uh, had nine points and three of 12 shooting. Like, uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't great. Had a couple turnovers, too. Was really trying to force the offense. He just wasn't there for him today. Wasn't there for anyone, really, today for the Raptors. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they just couldn't guard Simmons. And, again, this is where you really miss Kawhi. Um, you know, there's been all this talk about, you know, wow, the Raptors are 7-1 without Kawhi. 7-2. and And today, they really missed him, man. They really missed him, especially defensively, because Simmons was just going off, you know, um, sort of physically overwhelming whoever was guarding him. A little bit of a Blake Griffin type of game in the half court today. I think that's honestly Simmons' ceiling uh, before, you know, he develops, uh, you know, a credible jump shot. And even still, I mean, Blake has a really good jump shot, and he's still doing what he's doing. And, and so Simmons has a way to go. But honestly, it's one of the most impressive performances I've seen from Simmons. Uh, but again, I, I wouldn't take too much out of it just because Kawhi wasn't there. And when Kawhi's been there, it's uh, been a very different story. I think it's the same could be said for Joel Embiid, who had 27 points and 10 of 15 shooting with uh, seven free throws and also 11 rebounds in 31 minutes. Hyper-efficient outing from Embiid. Uh, a lot of that is because he was going up against Greg Monroe, who at this point I might be ready to call uh, officially that he might be the worst defensive big man in the NBA, and that's not to knock Moose. I think he's actually come in and given good minutes, but this is, something what, this is what we could have expected, to be honest, right? And I think, you know, we knew he wasn't a good pick-and-roll defender, we know, obviously, he doesn't like to come to the perimeter, but I thought at least because he's bulky, like he would be able to play some good post defense. But I just so far, from what I've seen this season, um, he's, he's just been very soft down low, like defensively. He just kind of like concedes position very easily. Um, and I, I don't know, man. Maybe no one wants to get hurt. I mean, everyone's looking forward to uh, the Christmas break and everything like that. And the Raptors obviously got, you know, three days off until the next game uh, on Boxing Day. But... Man, Moose is just not there, man. And beat there's like a possession in the second quarter where like um and B just like physically moved him like right until he was right under the basket and then just laid it up over him. And it was just like it was kind of sad to watch. Like, come on, man. Like Monroe, you're, you're the one thing I thought with Monroe was that like, okay, look, you don't have JV, but at least Monroe has that physicality that you figure, you know, he's smart, he's nimble, he's very strong, like he should be able to do better in the post. Like, you know, there's a lot of these guys who are post-up brutes are usually pretty good on the post and themselves, right? Like um, Al Jefferson wasn't another example of that. But yeah, today, man, Monroe was just not cutting against Embiid and Embiid just scored at will. I mean, the Raptors' best shot at actually at defending Embiid was actually when they had Pascal Siakam playing small ball center. 
They forced Embiid into a couple of turnovers, and that was impressive. But, I mean, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Embiid was just torching. Uh, Monroe, and to be fair, the Monroe, I mean, you know, it wasn't only on Monroe. Like, Embiid also hit a couple of jumpers over Siakam, but at least that's part of the game plan, right? You want him to take jumpers, especially from the mid-range. And if he makes them, okay, cool, then you're not going to win. That's It is what it is, but... Um, I just expected a little bit more from Monroe, and I, I didn't think he delivered. But, you know, I, again, I wouldn't take too much out of this game as a whole. Like, I just really wouldn't. Um, you know, they, I, I think neither team really came into it with uh, that much of an emphasis to play defense. Um, you know, the Sixers kind of turned it on in the second half. But also, the Raptors just stopped making shots. The Raptors shot 10 of 40 from deep as a whole. And uh, you're not going to win games when you shoot like that. Uh, while also giving up 35 free throw attempts to the Sixers. And uh, I don't know, man. I wouldn't take, I, again, I, I just just throw this whole result out. It really is one of the most meaningless uh, list games of the year, even though it is a pretty important matchup. But, you know, with the Raptors injuries and also, it's, it's weird, man. The games right before Christmas are just really weird. Um, like the Bucks lost to the Heat. Like, that's weird. Um, so I guess the Raptors are still keeping their uh, advantage over the Bucks. I think they're still a game and a half over them for tops in the East. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it just the Raptors just didn't have it. What can I say? And defensively, they were uh, kind of sloppy. But uh, over to some of the positives Kyle Lowry played. Uh, I still think he was physically not very sharp. And, um, you know, but, I, I look, Kyle is from Philadelphia, and uh, – Kyle has a big say in whether or not he plays in Philadelphia. So he was not going to miss this game. Uh, and, he, you know, he, he was all right. I mean, he had 20 points, six rebounds, five assists, a steal, a block. You know, uh, only two of nine from deep. But it was actually pretty creative in getting to the free throw line and also getting in the mid-range. Had a really nice move where he left J.J. Racist uh, with the spin move and, and spun it right to the basket. You know, Pascal's influence on the team is very evident. But, um you know, it's good. It's good to see. I mean, you, you miss Kyle. He hasn't played the last four games. He had the thigh thing. Um, you know, now the Raptors have another three days off, so it's even more rest. And hopefully they just take some time to get Kyle going right because, you know, we've seen how important a healthy Kyle is to this team. Um, and Kyle, even today, even limited, but he's still such a brainiac, still finding ways to contribute. You know, Kyle Lowry being Kyle Lowry. It shouldn't surprise anybody. Um, another positive from this game was Pascal Siakam uh, taking a turn at basically being the number one option now granted he was a minus 21 in 37 minutes so you know it wasn't like that great but uh, he was he was not bad he really wasn't that bad he shot 11 to 21 from the field uh, but a lot of that was because he shot all of six from deep he just couldn't hit that open three tonight um, but overall I mean he was very aggressively going to the basket capitalized on a lot of mismatches um, you know hustle plays you know loose balls capitalizing putting the layups in those are things that Siakam is always gonna be good at but I think, you know, this is another game where it's kind of useful, right? Where you could look at what's the next level for Siakam. Obviously, we're getting a little bit greedy because he's taking so many strides in his first couple of years. And he's already, you know, improved so much to the point where 26 points from him is, you know, you can consider that as a, a learning experience and he could get even better from this. But, he, I mean, I don't see a reason why he can't get better from this. And I think a couple of things he struggled with tonight, one against uh, length and bigger defenders, Teams are definitely sitting in that spin move now. And, uh, you know, they're not, they're basically not playing um, too much towards that, like, first step he takes towards the middle of the paint because they know he really just wants to spin away from the contact uh, and go to that right hand. Um, so they're really letting him do that. And so, you know, he had a couple of tough bang shots today, but for the most part, he struggled with finishing over length over guys like Joel Embiid and even Jonah Bolden, who was really impressive with his uh, hustle and energy. For the Sixers, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Pascal's good, man. Pascal's a good player. He's a really good player. It's intriguing, and you know, in order for him to take the next step, if he can take that, and that would be great if he could, he would be a max level player. If honestly, he could be the number one option while still playing the type of defense he's playing. But um, yeah, it's just you know, he has to develop a couple more finishing moves, uh, maybe a little bit more of a mid range game, and also the three point shot. Right? If he can get those two things down, then he would be incredible he'd be elite but right now we will settle for 26 points on a career high 21 field goals this is what it will look like if pascal is the number one option you know this has his ups and downs but for the most part still pretty productive 
Uh, and then in terms of any other positives, I mean, Fred Van Bleed had a really nice spurt to start the game. Uh, was really just splashing jumpers, but then he completely cooled off and just kind of disappeared. Um, what else? Norm. I like Norm. I like Norm. You know, if I want to give out three stars, I'm going to give out uh, Pascal number one. Oh, no, Kyle number one, Pascal number two, and then uh, Norm number three. I I've really, really enjoyed seeing what Norm has done, uh, you know, both yesterday against the Cavaliers and today against the 76ers. The difference in his approach is that he is much more calm and steady, and he's just picking his spots. It is night and day uh, watching his performances this year as compared to last year when he would come in, be super erratic, and basically be – CJ Miles without a jump shot, which is what CJ Miles is now. But um, Powell has just been incredible um, going to the basket, very composed, very steady. Uh, I think it's allowed him, slowing down a little bit has allowed him to finish. I think he's also a little bit stronger, so he's taking on contact a little bit better. Um, and then, you know, he has some threes and, you know, it was even decent with the passes, like 13 points on four of eight shooting with two threes, with three free throws. Like, I will take that any night from Norman Powell. And if he can continue doing this, then he's going to continue getting more minutes. And today, CJ got the minutes um, coming off the bench in the first half. In the second half, Powell took his minutes until CJ had to play garbage time. And so, you know, I, I think that's a trend. I, I noted that against the Cavaliers. You know, if CJ continues to struggle like this and everyone else is healthy, Norm's going to get more and more minutes. And uh, I think that trend's going to continue. I, I like what Norm is providing. And, uh, you know, it will be nice because I think a lot of people wrote him off, you know, as a bad contract or things like that. Uh, because of how bad he was last year, I, I completely understand. But we know he's talented. He's he's young. He's capable. And, um, you know, it was just a matter of how can he translate his abilities to become a productive player. And, again, it's very early. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing the last two games. I hope he continues it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so three stars. I, I think I said it already. Uh, Kyle, Pascal, and Norm. And then in terms of your Gerald Henderson Award, uh Give that to Ben Simmons. No, I'm kidding. Um, honestly, based on the way Ben Simmons played in the first two games, he really does deserve it this game. But uh, Big Rondo was good tonight, man. Big Rondo was, was nice. But uh, I'm going to give it to Jonah Bolden. Uh, only four points, but nine rebounds and four blocks. I think all four blocks came in the first quarter. He was so good at the rim, blocking Monroe, blocking Lowry, blocking Pascal. Like, he was just – he was very active. And uh, it's kind of a forgotten player because he was drafted in the second round. He played overseas – Last year, he came over this year. I guess he's the new Dario Saric or whatever. But, hey, man, very active. You know, stepped in for Mike Muscala and his dad's racist tweets. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he was he was real solid in those minutes. Really solid. Plus 14 in 25 minutes. The Sixers really need uh, just depth off the bench. And I don't think they necessarily need a guy like Bolton who's not uh, – he, he, he profiles as a good shooter. But, like, I don't know. It's like a Trey Lyles thing. Like, I'm not really sure if he's a good shooter, but he does shoot. Um, but I think just his hustle and energy could be very useful because the Sixers front court is actually kind of thin behind Embiid. So if they could get just some defense out of Bolden, that'd be nice. So, uh, I'm kind of keep an eye out for that, uh, with regard to the Sixers. But honestly, man, this is a game where I think both teams are looking forward to the break. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the Raptors got blown out, but I, I think the first two games for sure, and this is bias aside, but just the first two games, uh, you know, of the season, maybe in the first, maybe not even the first game because they didn't even have, um, they didn't have Butler for that one. But even the last one that was just played on ESPN, uh, when, uh, you know, when it was, uh, t t when it took place in Toronto and the ESPN All Access thing happened or whatever. Like, I think that one was way more informative than this one where, you know, it's kind of a throwaway. You don't have quite a guard Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons goes off. You don't have JV and you don't got Surge and then Embiid goes off. It is what it is, right? I, I don't know. We'll see once again when the two teams are healthy and how they match up one last time this season. But, uh, you know, this one was this one was an L. It is what it is. They still kept pace in the standings because the Bucks lost to the Heat. That's That one's strange, man. Because the Heat aren't that good. And, uh, the wow, the Bucks only had eight points in the first quarter. Jeez. And Giannis had nine points. Wow. Wow. Okay, I got to look at the tape for that one. But, uh yeah, it is what it is. It happens. It's not a big deal. Um, you know, I think this is the this is the last podcast before Christmas. So to everyone else who celebrates Christmas, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everyone else. And I'll be back on Boxing Day to recap the next Raptors game.